one font, a wheel full of emotions, and a time limit. This is the hack that forced me to get better at customizing typography. How? Well, let's find out. So I'm gonna spin the wheel containing all of these different emotions and whatever it lands on, I have 10 minutes to customize the type to fit this emotion. Let's spin the wheel. Is it gonna be happy? Is it gonna be sad? Or is it disgust? Is it? It's edged into anger. So let's get straight into Adobe Illustrator and start this challenge. So I'm gonna be using the font Comic Sans. Why? Because it is such a basic font and it will show you just how powerful customizing type can be. Three, two, one. Let's go. So when thinking of anger, you think loud, sharp, fierce, and mean. So the first and easiest change I'm gonna make is changing this to all caps. Now this immediately adds in more emotion. So I wanna create some sharp edges. So I'm using the rubber tool to do this. Now, if you press option and you drag the rubber tool, it creates a really precise rectangle, which is perfect for creating those sharp and rigid edges. So if you wanna get better at customizing typography, setting yourself a challenge like this can really help improve your skills and creativity. Now it might sound counterintuitive, but limitations really force more creativity. Now I'm gonna do something that is frowned upon and stretch the type. Um, I'm also gonna change the A and the N, drag this up slightly so that it fits in with the letters already. The spacing needs to come in slightly so that we can create some tension within anger and really portray this emotion. So now is where I can add um, different thicknesses and heights. So when you think of anger, you think of someone shouting at the top of their lungs. Ah! So we wanna show this within each letter. So I am on letter A. Now I think we need to get rid of some of these anchor points. So I'm using the pen tool and I'm clicking on the points that I wanna get rid of that will now create a straight and more precise line ready for me to customize this. So I'm gonna use the direct selection tool and actually move this out slightly to create different thicknesses. Um, I need to change the legs as well because this part inside is just not lining up. So let's drag this leg in so that it matches and then I can create a really thin part and a thick part to the letter. So I think I wanna grab the, do you wanna grab the curvature tool um, so that I can create a kind of curve that represents flames and fire. Cause when you think of fire, you think of heated, it's hot, it's angry. And I think that will kind of portray um, the emotion of anger within the type as well. So I'm just adjusting this. Oh, that went really super crazy. Now, if you're wondering kind of what tools I'm using to customize typography, my go-to are the pencil, the direct selection, the rubber, and the curvature tool. Okay, so this is looking really, really nice. I think, oh, that went a bit wild. Let's go back to the curvature tool um, and make sure that this is pretty curved. Let's add that. Oh, that actually works really nicely. It's kind of created a dip that goes in and then out, which I actually really like. So this inside part oh, needs to um, match the outside part, which if I drag that down, that works. I think that works. I like the thin um, and then the curvature on the outside. So um, we can now move on to the N and fit this to match the A. So the aim is to bring the letters really close together to build that tension within anger that I was on about. So once again, I am getting rid of some of the anchor points with the pen tool, um, just so that it creates those straight edges and a straight line for me, because right now it is just a bit all over the place. And then I can grab the direct selection tool and bring things in slightly. So you've seen this challenge where I've put a bunch of emotions in a wheel and spun it. Now this is because emotions are a really easy thing to visualize, which should help when customizing the type to showcase this. But you could use things like color, characteristics, and even more. So let me know if you want me to do a part two to this video where I try something a little different. So I'm adding a curve in here to match the letter A and keep this consistent. Um, this also lines up nicely for the G, which can sit nicely in here because the G is obviously curved. Um, also, uh, we're also making each letter really messy um, on the baseline as anything too structured will kill this emotion that we're trying to portray. So I am onto the G now and I'm grabbing the pencil tool and I am just adjusting um, this curve to match in to where the N is. So something that I haven't mentioned is why customizing typography and letters are really important as a designer. Let me just get this inside part right because it is 
quite tricky and it is doing my head in. So um, I customize typography when designing a logo type for a client. This way that they have something custom and unique to their business instead of having a font that anyone could use. It also means as a designer, I can charge more for my work as I'm creating something really custom um, for my client within the typography. So I am just gonna continue to adjust the G. How are we doing for time? We have got, um, oh, okay, so we had four minutes. We are over four minutes. I don't know if that is good or if that is bad. I think we're on track. I don't know. Someone let me know. <laughs> okay, so I like that there's curves within this um, that match the existing typography that we've customized, but then I also really like the sharp edges on the G. So that is looking pretty good now. I'm just, I feel like I could just adjust this forever. Um, so we know that customizing type is a really great way to improve as a designer, but that is something that you could do that will instantly help you improve. And that is by having an access to useful resources, which is so important. I'm talking thousands of commercial fonts, mockups, and maybe even a few logo reveal animations. And that's where Envato Elements, the sponsor of this video, comes in really, really handy. So if you're interested, click the first link in the description. I feel like I need to stop with this G because I could just go on for hours. So let's just move on to the E. So I think I need to make this a lot straighter. So I'm gonna use the rubber tool again to create a really straight line. Um, and then I think I need to get rid of some of these anchor points because they're just doing things that are making the type really crazy right now. So um, let's get rid of all of these. I think that works. Is that all of the anchor points? So I'm gonna grab the direct selection tool and bring these points down, which I hope is gonna make the E look really evil, which it does. It kind of looks like it is frowning. I've just actually had such a good idea. So you know when someone is frowning and some, no, you know when someone is angry, their facial expressions include someone's eyebrows kind of turning down and looking really, really angry. So we could try and include this. I don't know if this is gonna work by kind of creating like an arching eyebrow with the letter. Um, hopefully the anger emotion will shine through this. Uh, once again, I'm using the curvature tool. All that dip is really nice because it's kind of is really consistent with that A that we've created. So that is, is looking pretty, pretty nice. Is that working? That is working. I'm gonna curve the inside of the E so that it curves within the G. I also kind of like how the G is enclosed because it's like someone is inside there and they are like shouting, which is then exploding outwards, um, creating the kind of customized type, if that even makes any sense. Does in my head, I kind of like that it's like creating a waveform or like vibrations and it's starting at one point and then getting more explosive. So that works really nicely. I really like that eyebrow at the top. Can you see the eyebrow that I've created? Um, I think I just need to adjust this slightly. I think the N is potentially too far over. So I'm just gonna adjust that. Um, let's bring, let's grab the N and we can use the curvature tool just to move the anchor points. So then I can bring the G slightly. Does that kind of work? I feel like I could be here for hours and we are nearly on seven minute mark. I think I need to just add in a straighter point to this G. Um, does that work? Yeah, that kind of works. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Um, I feel like if I do anything else, is there anything else I can do? Maybe move this top of the eyebrow. I feel like it's not quite how I want it. Move it up slightly. That eyebrow is just looking really, really fierce. That E is giving me like angry vibes, which is exactly what we want. Okay, I could probably just keep adjusting every single letter, but uh, let's just move that up slightly if that works because the top of the E now is quite high um, and the N N need to fit with that. Right, Abby, stop adjusting type because I'm gonna be here for hours. Okay, we need to move on um, in a minute to the R. Let's just scale that. Right, let's go to the R because otherwise I'm gonna be here for fucking hours. So um, one thing to remember when customizing type is making sure that the letters look really consistent with one another. So the width, the look, the characteristics are the same. Otherwise you will create an imbalance, which is really not pleasing to the eye. So I am grabbing the curvature tool and actually I'm going to grab the pencil tool and we're going to change um, the bottom of the R because right now it is not looking like an R. Oh, that kind of looks really nice. That is a little bit too far. Let's bring this in slightly. I love using the pencil tool, by the way, and a lot of my videos I use the pencil tool to customize type because it just allows me to just free form with it um, and create the points that I need to. So let's change the kind of base of the R. It's not doing what I want. Sometimes it will take you a lot of attempts. Right, let's change the inside. Oh, didn't mean to duplicate that. Change the inside of this R. Uh, I think you could potentially add in like a 
secret fire. Not a secret, but a thing that looks like a fire. I don't know. Um, okay, so that works really nicely. Right, let's see if we can add, can we use, let's use the curvature tool. Uh, let's get rid of some of these anchor points and bring this down slightly. It's kind of creating another arch like that eyebrow as well as kind of creating like a flame or a fire, if that makes sense. So, um, is there anything else? I think it needs to be more sharp. So using the rubber tool, honestly, is so good because you can just get it so precise with that rectangle that is using the option and then just dragging it once again. So typography um, within brand, typography is used within branding to portray certain emotions. And that's why choosing the right font and customizing it for the business is so damn important. As you've noticed here, it portrays anger. Um, and that is the whole point of this challenge. So how long have we got left? I think we've got 30 seconds left. I feel like we're on a good point. I feel like the art just is slightly inconsistent. Maybe we add a bend in to the art. Oh, that did not go to plan. Um, okay, that kind of works. If I keep adjusting this, um, is there anything else I need to do? Because I feel like I am going to run out of time here. Uh, we need to change the freaking color. Changing it to red because otherwise, um, when you think of anger, you think of red. And something else I want to do is add in like a blur effect. Uh, to create this anger, how long? Three seconds, let's press OK, and done. It's created a really nice blur effect. So that is the time up. Um, and it's kind of reminding me that when someone like slams their fist on the table, it's created that vibration, which we've added in slightly. I completely forgot that you could do that, but we added it in at the end, in the nick of time. I definitely got a bit overwhelmed there, but I hope everything made sense because it was a little bit rushed. Um, anyway, let's do a comparison of a before and after so we can see the original font and see exactly what what we've changed. So before we've got the Comic Sans font, which is really curved, it has soft edges, which creates a really friendly feel. Basically not what we were trying to achieve. So after with our customized type, we've got really nice sharp edges. We've got letters designed closer together to create that tension. We've got an eyebrow designed in here on the E to show that angry expression and the use of curves, two sharp edges to represent fire, which is explosive and hot. It is one thing being good at customizing typography but that is pointless if you are stressed and overwhelmed all the time because you don't have a clear client process in place. That's why you need to watch this video right here where you get an in-depth look at how I work with my clients. I'll see you over there.